here is the Arbor of Abbey, the remains of it, and then yeah, well, it's just put a gravestone in there indicating where William is buried. So overall, William's work and spiritual leadership, his relationship to Rome, if you go back through those previous slides, you'll, you'll read there how the Church of Scotland under William had a special relationship with Rome and the Church was not to be subject to any other authority other than the Pope in Rome. The respect which William received from Rome as a separate kingdom to England was a thorn in the side of England as the royal line of David and his grandmother, William's grandfather was David I, and his grandmother, Queen of England, Margaret, the wife of Malcolm the Third, King of Scotland, is the mute point here. Queen Elizabeth, of course, has the dubious honour of being descended from Vlad the Impaler and Jack the Ripper, who was the son of Edward VII, a man himself, full of lust and evil. So his son was the Duke of Clarence. He contracted syphilis in a brothel at the age of 16. He became impotent, and so seeking revenge, used his knife as a phallic, entering into and ripping the insides out of six women in white chapel. He had an apartment in Whitechapel studying art. His bloodlust required Dr. Gill, the royal physician, to ride in a black carriage at night. The area fenced off by Scotland Yard bobbies, where this blood-soaked Prince of Wales would be subdued, cleaned up and then taken back to the palace. He was engaged to marry Mary Techt, a German woman. Later, his brother married her, and that lineage descends to Elizabeth. Later, Bertie died in an insane asylum, as has two of Elizabeth's aunts. The numbers suggest that Jack has reincarnated into Prince Charles. Would it not be reasonable to expect a monarch to be above reproach? Have your best interests at heart, make certain your children are safe and protected, their food not contaminated with soy or bromide, a chemical that removes the iodine from their bodies and causes infertility and lowers the immune system. In bread. From the early 70s, at the suggestion by Prince Charles, his father Philip's desire to come back as a deadly virus to control the population. Would you expect the return Jesus to do the following? Establish clinics that cure all diseases, call out all that offend, homosexuals, child molesters, the churches, Zionists, Freemasons, cardinals, popes and secret societies. Expose the evils and tell you the truth of what is happening in faith and that Pope Benedict XVI is a saint. While driving from a small town called Inn in Germany on the 15th of June 2013, we took a series of photos of, of vehicles in front of us. The shadows taken showed a shadow on either side of the vehicle of about the same shade. I should read the photos taken showed a shadow on either side of the vehicle of about the same shade. As we travelled with the north northwest light of the setting sun and a light in the sky southeast, casting shadows from either side of the vehicle, a large truck had shadows on either side, but not the rear as we expect that it should. All very odd. Now the line around the new equator axis of 17.18 degrees 
So in the slide following this, it will show the equator. Then the jungles of South America are the lungs of the earth. Just reading ash, as usual, located us at a precise location which enabled us to locate and prove the new axis of the earth. And how it spells out all nations will be totally devastated unless they seek the Lord, and as scripture predicts, every knee shall bow to the returned Jesus. And since it is Ash speaking, for those who might be hearing for the first time, the Lord Jesus Christ has been returned since his rebirth date of January 11, 1944, as announced by Benedict XVI, who is still Pope. Christ did not accept his retirement and his communication with the world has been cut off since he has. Now, this is the view that was outside of our north facing window when we were staying in Folkestone, South East England. Now, I'm not going to speak throughout these. These are all uploaded in our previous PowerPoint, but I'll run through them as a reminder of what it's all about. The four horns, which represent the four horns of the sacrificial altar, Moses dabbing blood on the sacrifice of the sacrifice on each of the horns. So the first, yeah, this and yes, this is in the slides. You'll see the roof line to the Methodist Church. This tower is the Christ Tower, as they call it, and is the remains of a uh, sacrificed church. It's at 1942, May the 17th, was destroyed. Now, of course, the enemy, the, uh, on a Sunday, of course, the enemy of all mankind are, are the Jews, call themselves Jews, and are not known as the Zionists today, and, and they were the ones that orchestrated World War I, World War II. It's all to do with the current ruling elite, the Jews who call themselves Jews are not. Now, to be a Zionist, you don't have to be a Jew. All who support the Zionist propaganda and agenda are identified by the Christ as the enemy of all mankind, and they will be evicted from the face of the earth. However, unrepentant mankind uh, will be suffering the uh, consequences of their not repenting and bowing to the returned Lord Jesus Christ, whose name today is Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, the warning from the Revelation 3.12, the new name and Revelation 19.12, the name written that only he would know. He is the King of Kings, meaning the most royal man on the earth and the Lord of all lords. So the next slides you can review for yourselves. 